Oh, God. But uh, regardless, I'm sure this is still going to be an amazing series. I'm sure as well. And we are going to kick it off, of course, on the Terran favorite map, that being Waterfall. We're in the bottom left hand corner of that, spawning all the way in the bottom left hand corner. We, of course, have our red Zerg player coming out from the land of Brisbane. He is the king of Brisbane, looking to fly down or maybe train down to packs super south. Representing our very own team, the Cranky Ducklings, and playing tonight as well, he is Oreo. And spawning in the top right-hand corner of Waterfall, we have the Australian Terran player himself, representing Team Mind Freak. It is Seether. Up against the pool first. Yeah, we have a very interesting opener here from Oreo. He isn't usually a cheesy player, but looking at the vetoes, and I'm sure we we always talk about this whenever we end up here, we end up here. Um, Waterfall is a very interesting map to have make it through the vetoes in a ZVT. Yeah, I feel like every ZVT that we've passed it lately has had at least one game on Waterfall. So maybe times are changing. You know, maybe Zerg players have figured out how to beat Terran on this map. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure it is involving a roach push as the drone does get rallied yep. <laughs> behind the mineral line. There is that roach warren. We've seen time and time again bio tank pushes just completely shut down bases and, and kind of macro oriented play from the Zerg player on Waterfall. But, you know, it works both ways. And because of that, because of the short rush distance, like these roach pushes, they can also hit very hard from the side of Zerg. I think it's the right call for Oreo to do this at the start of the series, mm. just to try to trigger a little bit of Seether's PTSD from DreamHack. <laughs> it, it did happen in DreamHack, it did happen, not gonna lie. Oh god, so yeah, I, I like this as well. Very bold move here by Oreo for, this to, for him to do this in game one, but then again, it does make a lot of sense when it comes to planning for the series overall, when it comes to planning, to planning for a best of. Meanwhile, we do have a bit of an SCV scout coming on in. Lings are here to deny him, and the SCV does see the tech. Oh. And there is more than enough time right now for Seether to prepare for that Roach push. Sorry, rallying his units to the high ground. We should be seeing a bunker pretty soon, but that's for now he really does want to prioritize the Cyclone. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, Seether has plenty of time to prepare. It's also one of those things where this is where mind games come into play. So Seether scouted, and Seether knows that Oreo knows that he scouted <laughs> so oreo is still going for a push but he's also joining up behind this like it's not going to be as committed as it otherwise could have been yeah he's just going to try to contain seether on two on two maybe one bases if possible and then like you said drone up from there we do have that safety bunker in the main base but yeah i don't think the cc should be in too much trouble here yeah, the CC should be fine. Just, you know, no mining at the natural whatsoever. We do have the first deep. We're going to be going down. The SCV pool is late, by the way. Does get here to keep the the to keep the depot alive, but ooh, three SCVs get targeted down. Yeah, and the bunker... Bunker? No, supply depot will go down in the end anyway. Oreo will be able to make it into this main base and cause even more havoc. Yeah, this is getting a little bit out of hand, not going to lie. Like, the positioning of that bunker just is not ideal. Like, e even this reactor is exposed. Yeah, the reactor is exposed, more SCVs are starting to go down. Uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Seether thought Oreo would be coming in a bit more from the north, but uh, was not the case in the end. Seether's entire uh, mineral line is starting to get man. forfeit. This is a non-committed road it, push. It is, a it is a committed, man. And I think Seether thought it was going to be even less committed. I think he thought it was going to be like three roaches and that's it. But, mate, this is out of hand. This is out of control. 18 SCVs have gone down. But finally, the roach push gets dealt with. Finally, gets cleaned up. But Seether's down to 11 workers. Aye, aye, aye. Versus the 43, soon to be 45 off Oreo. That's enough to, that's enough for dessert player to transition to the mid game. Seether wanted to play the mind games. He called mm -hmm. Oreo's bluff. Turned out, turns out Oreo wasn't bluffing. 
Yeah, Tur turns out he, he kind of was bluffing, but it didn't matter. He just <laughs> he won anyway. It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, now Oreo is miles ahead. Caesar has a lot of catching up to do right now. He does have, uh, you know, like map control right now with his Vikings. Going to be able to pick up a couple of these um, overlords. He has a liberator on the way as well. He's making a bunch of hellions. I imagine he's going to be forced to dive into a mineral line just to do some damage. But Oreo, all he has to do is defend. Defend, defend, defend. And that's something that you can do a little bit easier on two bases here. On Waterfall, the third base is looking a little bit exposed, but to be fair, there's not a lot that Hellions can do to punish a base itself. They can roast mineral, they can roast workers, but not buildings. Yeah, Hellions just, they're, they're not built for that sort of thing. I mean, we are going to have a lot of Hellions, you know, we're about to have nine Hellions in total here for Seether. He also has a Medivac, so he can even drop Hellions into the main base. Uh, really, right now, it's on Seether to flex his micro, to flex his control, to somehow equalize that damage. Aubrey just got thrown down. Oh my god. Seether, he is really committed to equalizing the damage across the map. The Vikings going to meet up with this army as well. Everything is getting rallied. If he really wanted to, he could pull the boys, but I guess Seether would rather you know, catch up rather than go all in from here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's, he's, he's very committed regardless. Uh, <laughs> as he is headed towards that third base location, we do not have a Baneling Nest. Bear that in mind. So we only have Ling Queen Roach to defend. So far, the Hellions, they try to dip on in and they are going to roast up the mineral line. Oof. Drones all lining up. Ten of them do go down, and that's a really, really, really good start here for Seether. Hellions get morphed into Hellbat. Seether really flexing his control and how he's able to juggle these Hellbats back and forth. Oreo, he knows the base is forfeit. He's going to have to wait a little while to gather his forces once again. Yeah, again, without any Banelings, he has to wait even longer. These Lings are pretty useless right now, so he goes for a massive run by instead. I love this decision because, honestly, those Lings wouldn't do anything defensively, and uh, there is no wall. Oh, God, Seether, his worker count is going to get even lower. Yeah, we're down to 19 SCVs versus 50 workers right now. The Hellbats are really doing a good job of roasting the uh, Queens, however. Here come the reinforcing roaches, though, and I don't think Hellbats can really make a dent in that. GG, Oreo takes game and number one. GG, Seether did a lot of damage with his push. But it just goes to show how behind he was, right? Where he, he, yeah. he got, what, 10 workers and a third base? Like, that's insane. But he needed even more than that. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he just wasn't able to pull it off there. Oreo taking a, a quick, nice game one lead here in this series. Yeah, and doing it in style as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Somehow getting the Roach Horn scattered and dealing damage anyway, like that's uh, <laughs> that's yeah. a bit, bit Monka S, mate. Oh my god. Yeah, it did definitely look like, uh, it did definitely look a lot like Seether has been preparing specifically for Roach Bushes ever since he did get knocked out of Dreamhack because of that. You know, he was scouting as much as he could, he got the bunker, but. In the end, he miscalculated what he really could get away with. Uh -huh. <laughs> and also the tiredness and stuff. <laughs> and also and also staying up all night uh, playing Call of Duty. He's uh, starting to have a bit of a toll on him. As he's telling us here. <laughs> uh, see, he was like, mate, I swear I saw eight links at the start. Um... Ah, and we thought did, that it wasn't a big commitment into roaches. Wait, that's wait, did he, he did he not notice that he saw the roach one as well? That's that's crazy. No, I'm pretty sure he did see okay, it, okay. but he just thought that because he scouted it, mm. it was just gonna be speed links. Same four links. Yep. <laughs> the four links of Oreo, they were just moving so fast. <laughs> they were just moving so fast that they looked like they were they were doubled. Oh my god. <laughs> we we actually didn't quite catch that, but Oreo, he was maneuvering his lings on purpose in a way to make it look as if he had made more than he really did. Um, wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. The mind games, Papi. It feels so good having Oreo back. Like, I, yeah. I missed him, man. I missed him so much. The mind games, yeah. Uh.
Now he's going to have an even bigger mind here as we continue our series on Moondance. We're in the bottom right-hand corner map, spawning all the way in the bottom right-hand corner. We, of course, have our red Zerg player coming out from the land of Brisbane. He is up 1-0 in this best, best of three pre-qualifying match, representing our very own Cranky Ducklings. He is Oreo. And spawning in the top left hand corner of Moondance, we have the Australian Terran player himself representing Team Mind Freak. It is Sather. Yeah, and again, once again, just like the previous game, I'm shocked that this this made it through the vetoes, um, just because currently I know that Moondance is considered to be more of a Terran favorite map uh, for, multi for a multitude of reasons, other than, of course, the pocket base, you can very safely expand. You can hide a three base all in or a two base all in as well because of that. Um, so a Terran player can be a little bit more secure, but this could also be a little bit of the mind game sort of thing where Oreo roach rushed in the first game and he could be already like getting into Seether's head a little bit. Yeah, he could roach rush again. He could. You never know, unless he scout. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we do have a standard hatch gas pool opener, but you know, there's a multitude of different ways to incorporate roaches into your army and into your play. And a map like Moondance is really good for that sort of thing. It is the shortest rush distance in the map pool. Uh, sure, there are some defensive locations like all of these ramps, but likewise, there are also a lot of different ways to get up the ramp on top of the high ground and try and bust in towards that natural base. The natural that also isn't on high ground doesn't have a ramp, so it's going to be even easier to like assault. Yeah, as you've seen multiple times in the past with 12 pools. But like you were saying, Oreo just doing Oreo things. He is playing a lot more economical. He is just going to be droning up, and I imagine spreading creep very, very shortly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's looking normal from the side of Zerg. Meanwhile, from the side of Terran, we do see a pretty standard opener as well, just going for, you know, the, the Rax Expand sort of build. We have a factory follow-up. Nothing too crazy from here. Um, yeah, just... More standard TBZ, and hopefully Seether can get into, you know, his game. Yeah, that's really where I think Seether shines is towards the mid game when he is able to get all of his, get all the tech that he needs, get all of his marines and tanks and whatnot, and let's keep going for pushes whenever he can. Multi prong attacks, I mean, as well. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the Seether that we know and love and that we hopefully do see. Meanwhile, we already see this map coming into play. Seether does go for a third CC before Starport, um, but on location. Again, that's the power of Moondance. That's how greedy you can be here. Um, Oreo isn't looking to punish that, though. So, yeah, I, it, it's just interesting Oreo's kind of uh, play style here on Moondance, just kind of accepting things as they are and being like, yo, Seether, you know what? I can beat you with some cheese, and you know what? I can beat you in the mid game as well. Yeah. It almost feels like Oreo knows that Seether was going to play a bit more defensive this game, so he's just taking advantage of that. Like you said, he knows he's in the mind of Seether right now. Rent free. Yeah, in the mind. So he free. is just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what the mind freak refers to. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have one lone link sneaking on in, does get a full scout of, doesn't delay the third CC, but at least confirming, okay, Oreo knows it's the third CC before Starport build, he knows it is very economic centric, and he has the freedom to throw down double, Evo, double Evos to delay his bailing nest a little bit more, just to be a little bit greedy. Hey, it's the freedom and the resources to do so. Just watching the drone count get higher and higher and higher. Yeah, pretty much. You know, he's free to drone. He just has to rely on his queens just to make sure that he keeps up with the Hellion rotations, to be fair. Um, but because of his Overlord spread, he has been able to do so. He has to be careful, as there is a Viking as well to help stem the tide and help keep Oreo in the dark. We can see already Oreo prematurely even pulling the boys, being that that careful against these Hellions. Yeah, nice little maneuver here from Caesar to clear one of those creep tumors a little bit of a run by coming in here from oreo trying to just yeah, see whatever he can get away with 
will scout that there are Hellions continuing to be made and they will be rallied across the map. Yeah. What I'm worried about Oreo is that he doesn't know a Liberator's coming his way. Yeah, Liberator is going to be coming his way. We do now have spores being thrown down, but the Liberator is already out. So there's still potential for damage here for Seether to try and split the attention of Oreo. Um, but that scout was pretty impressive. He got three SCV kills as well. That's something that just shouldn't really be happening at this stage of the game. Um, so a decent amount of damage. Oh, we have a tri-prong attack. We have landed Viking with a Liberator and even Hellions here slipping into the natural. Yeah, it's hard to see a scenario where drones do not go down to this harass. Nine of them, ten of them, already being roasted by the Hellions. The Liberator getting a, a little bit of damage done as well. It's not every day I see a land of Viking harass, but Seether is making, is making huge waves with it. Finally, all of the harass is starting to get cleaned up. But that's 23 drones going down. I say all of the harass. It's actually still Liberator over here. Yeah, Liberator is still alive as well. I'm afraid to look, but Liberator alone has nine kills. That was an insane amount of damage. And again, this is the Seether that we know going for the multi prong aggression, just pulling his opponent apart in one fell swoop, taking a massive lead in the economy. Yeah, Oreo now getting a little bit desperate. He knows he needs to do something big to catch back up in the economy. He does have the Baneling Nest finally, so. He is going to try to just bust in through natural and try to get some damage on here. If he's lucky, he might be able to catch a couple of these marines as well. But if not, I don't really see a run by doing too much. Oh, but the medevacs do move out just as Oreo is going for the uh, as he goes for the bus. But Seether does notice he pulls back in time. Bailings are going to be able to bust in towards the natural base, and oh, Oreo actually going to be dealing some decent damage here. Even slips on in towards that third. Yes, yeah, Seether, he's playing this out a little bit safely, you know, he doesn't want to just drop his marines on top of the ling, so, he's for so he takes a bit more of a defensible location that unfortunately does delay his defense. Oreo slowly catching back up when it comes to the work count. Yeah, he's going to be catching back up, he's going to be able to take down these deepers as well, supply blocking Seether. Honestly, again, this was a very necessary move from Oreo, also a little bit lucky that it just happened to have happened just as Seether was loading up his medevacs to move out across the map, and with that, Oreo is able to regain his worker lead. Yeah, he's on four bases, he's just... Having a fun time macroing up and droning up wherever he can. He's making sure that he does have his tech. You know, Lair finished up a while ago. Link speed is now on the way. Or Bane Link speed, sorry. It's now on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bane Link speed again. It was delayed earlier because of the prioritization of 1-1 one, one and the double Evo. The double Evo, sorry. Um, there we go. Plus two attackers on the way. I'm sure we're oh, going to get plus two carapaces You well. love, yeah. You love to see it. <laughs> You're like, it's been too long, Papi. What has Risky done to us? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, Oreo is just waiting for a little bit more gas before he can start. Plus two carapace. I'm sure he's going to start it as soon as he can. Meanwhile, Dub Drop is moving out. But the crease spread has also been pretty pretty impressive here from Oreo. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard creep spread for Oreo, you know? True. true. It wouldn't be a ZVT if, with Oreo playing if there was a creep across the map by the 10 minute mark. <laughs> there we go, the creep is spreading. Meanwhile, we have the gas. There is plus two armor. He, Carapace, he will not forget it. Unlike another no, uh, no, uh, another zone player <laughs> that we will not name. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, we have a hydrogen as well as Oreo is just setting himself up, up here for the mid game. But despite that, Seether is dealing damage. We have a liberator in towards the natural. We have a double drop sneaking into the main base and another double drop headed towards the linear third yeah we mentioned it at the start of this game but this is really what Seether does best in tvz just going for multi-prong attacks and making sure that at least one of the prongs is able to penetrate the defenses of zerg nine more drones go down and Seether doesn't lose too much of his army yeah exactly he lost a handful of of marines i believe he lost the liberator the double drop was thwarted thankfully oreo was able to keep up with his queen movement and he did force it away from his main base so that could have been a lot worse but nine worker kills is you know i'm sure seether is pretty happy with that yeah it sacks up over time and you know it's nine more things of larva that oreo's forced to make into drones instead of making into lings or hydras or anything like that yeah, exactly, exactly. As Oreo has finally hit that 86 drone count, but for how much longer is he going to maintain that drone count as the double drop is slipping in towards that base? We have a couple, a little bit of Ling Bane here in the Bane connection. One Ooh. of them was decent, but it just wasn't enough. 
Yeah, both players are tied on the upgrade, so that is enough for the Terran player to be able to tank at least one Bailing connection. Plus two melee, finally finishing up here for Oreo, but it's a little bit unfortunate oh. that it wasn't done by the time. That it wasn't done when the Bane Link's actually connected. Yeah, exactly. That would have been the world of difference. Meanwhile, the target fire is insane. Seether picking off two of those Bane Links and the Queen as well. Ay, ay, ay. Keeping this drop alive. Keeping the pressure on. Oreo, despite all of this, has been attempting to tech up. We do have the Hive and Lurker down on the way. But this is kind of affecting the creep spread. We have some decent creep spread in the middle of the map. But towards the edges, we just don't have that many active tumors. Because the Queens have been so busy trying to keep up with these drops. Yeah, now finally we have a couple of Hydra so for Oreo, so these queens are gonna have a lot more time and a lot more freedom to just spread their creep to the edges of the map. Yeah, and as you say that, there we go, a couple more tumors are thrown down. Finally, Oreo has a moment to breathe, um, as he already has his army split up as well, just to keep up with all of these drops. And as time has gone on, Oreo now has access to Lunkers. Oh, yeah, it's time to smoke. <laughs> Terrans, look away. Vindicta, Jadoff, I see you guys in the chat. Don't do it, puppy. Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, these are Lair Tech Lurkers, but there we go. The upgrades are on the way. Now that the Hive is done, it is only a matter of time before they come out here for Oreo. And c has done a great job at just keeping the pressure up. He now has a fourth base, but can he establish a fifth? I have my doubts, and that's actually going to be pretty worrisome here. You know, Terran really does need five bases to go into the late game in order to sustain their armies. You know, four bases is fine if you're planning to counterattack and be aggressive very, very soon. Yeah, and we'll see if he can establish that base. Meanwhile, we do have a little bit of a push here in the middle of the map. Uh, he's going to get cleaned up. Uh, I guess does get a couple of these tumors in the middle just to stem the tide. We do see that Seether is trying to expand here over on the right-hand side of the map. The CC is on the way, and Oreo hasn't checked that area yet. He's still a little bit more focused on defending as he's waiting for all of his Hive upgrades to finish. And uh, they're about to. Yeah, Cracklings are about... Two thirds done. Lurker upgrades are about done, but I don't think he has any lurkers on him. Yeah, he does have crew spines, but still doesn't have any lurkers remaining. Do you see the bio army dancing here with the Ling Bane bold move? Oh my god, he's gonna get surrounded! Oh, just barely able to pick up a couple of his units in uh. Metavax. Very nice trade here for Oreo. And Seether backed into a corner once again. Yeah, Seether diving a little bit too far onto Creep, but now the Vipers are here full of energy. We have the Abducts, we have the Blinding Clouds, or you're gonna try and go for that fourth Mineral Lion. The boys are being pulled and they are being saved and Seether is holding the Lion. Yeah, he is holding a nine. Huge connection of Banelings on top of the Marines, but there are still tanks where that came from. I love this from Oreo. He was chasing down <laughs> the retreating SCV, so he is able to make a pretty decent dent in Seether's economy. Oh, he is, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned. He, I believe he did end up losing one of his Vipers in that trade, but he has eyes on that fifth base already, just being as annoying as possible, forcing it to lift off. And there it is. The Lurkers are coming. Oreo with the Ling main Hydra Lurker Viper. He has his composition of choice. 3-3 three, three is now done for the next fight. I'm getting the smoke ready. <laughs> See how this happens. I mean, you did mention a couple of times uh, that lurkers have a time and a place, and True. it's a little bit difficult to utilize lurkers when the Terran player already has a massive tank line mm -hmm. set up like this. But yeah. I do see a couple of vulnerabilities here for Seether, and I'm sure Oreo sees them as well. Probably sees more than I do, as too. Yeah, exactly. A questionable move trying to force himself up this ramp. He does throw down a couple of blinding clouds, but there we go. Oreo cannot break this position. I was about to 100% agree with you, Yaku, when it comes to like how fortified C3 is here, and it would be crazy to try and break this, and then Oreo went for it. Uh <laughs> And as a result, like, this is costing Oreo a lot of resources. Like, he does not have a mineral bank anymore. Like, it, it took a lot to try and go up this ramp, um, and it just wasn't really worth it. Yeah, I could definitely see a scenario where that would have worked out for Oreo. You know, he gets on top of the tanks and on top of the bio with his lurkers, immediately borrows, and then just kind of forces the issue there with blinding clouds and abducts. But unfortunately for Oreo, Adaptive Talents only finished up to at the end of that fight. Yeah, exactly. 
That's the problem with Oreo, man. He he's too fast for his own good. He's too furious. He is. <laughs> it's all uh, about that family. If it, exactly. And speaking of family, Oreo wants to try and go for the fifth base instead. We do have a couple of blinding paths being thrown down. Bailings are going to connect. The planetary is going to go down, but will he have enough to, enough to stop the counterattack? Ooh. Yeah, you can definitely see what a difference Adaptive Talents does make. Oreo is able to break that fifth base, but like you said, it's still a very inefficient trade for Zerg and Seether has more than enough to go for a counterattack right now. Yeah, he really, like, Oreo is so vulnerable. He lost every single one of his lurkers. He saved his vipers, but uh, he has to remake such a gas intensive or just such uh, such an intensive army. Um, Seether just doing a great job at weathering the storm and Oreo once again overextending a little bit too much in uh, two fights in a row now. Yeah, but I like what he's doing with this Nidus over here, Light. It's going to try to cause a little bit more disruption in, I imagine, the production of Seether, you know, taking a page off of his book. Yeah, I mean, we have a couple of different ways that we can go about this. We do see the Overseer going to be skirting around the left-hand side of the map. It can sneak in towards the pocket base. Like, we can see that there's a sliver on the edge of the map that the sensor tower is not covering. And if he gets behind the pocket, he could even get into the main base as well from behind. So, Oreo being a little bit sneaky here, we'll see if he can pull this off. This is the time and the place you want to utilize your lurkers. Right. The Overseer slips past the <laughs> Sensor Tower. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Seether did not see it. I Meanwhile, he's a little bit preoccupied trying to catch the army. There we go. Nidus into the main base, and Seether is responding. I don't think that Nidus is all loaded up right now, so it could just be a bit of a fake out. Okay, there are a couple of units in that Nidus. Yeah, but definitely. again, this is mostly a fake out. Oh, exactly. Only three lurkers here at the same time. The main army of Oreo is going to try and dive on in. There are a lot of tanks, but the tanks are exposed. They're all alone. Yeah, a couple of unfortunate blinding clouds, but those other blinding clouds do connect with whatever they need to. The lurkers got on top of this entire position and completely delete the mineral line once again. Seether has, has still a pretty decent standing army, but he is out of a bank, especially a gas bank. Mate, Seether just got baited, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His entire bio army, medevacs, ghosts, marines and all, responded to the Nidus, and he just left his army completely exposed, completely vulnerable. Oreo taking a massive supply lead. He is going to take a lot of snipes to the face, but again, he accomplished what he needed to. He got the fifth, he reset the tank count, and uh, just just like that, Seether, he he has to try and catch up. He's so far behind. Seether is making two tanks, three goes at a time, because that's obviously all he can afford. He is starting to make a couple of marines, and there are a lot of scenarios in the ultra late game of TVZ. Marines do make, do make the entire difference. Mm -hmm. Now is not that time. We're not quite in ultra late game right now. I mean, there, there is no ultra then over here for Oreo, so... Yeah, no, no Ultra Den. Instead, we see a Greater Spire on the way instead to go into Broodlords, which will have a better time, especially um, if the Ghost Count isn't looking too high or if there isn't enough to protect those tanks. Um, oh, God. I think we, we mentioned the same thing against Risky, but this is even more so. Seether has so much supply in Medivacs right now. He can harass to his <laughs> heart's content, uh, but... It but there's not actually any damage behind the harass. Yeah, it's like, yo, he can drop me. Let's go. <laughs> oh, God. It, ah. This is why medevacs need to have the ability to load up bombs. Uh, and just drop bombs. That would be terrifying. That'd be absolutely terrifying. But maybe, maybe. We do see a scan here. Seether has been able to catch up with the supply. And even though Seether is really lacking when it comes to the workers, he's making up for that in army. He has such a massive army disparity compared to Oreo. Um, so he can still take a fight. He can, provided that army is where the army needs to be. The snipes are looking really good on top of these lurkers, but the ghosts are getting boxed into a quarter. There are so many banelings light that not even with this amount of tanks, especially with blinding clouds, isn't enough to get rid of them. More SCVs go down, and Oreo has traded so efficiently. He basically reset the ghost count. 
He really with did. Nothing but locusts and veins. And we saw that Seether did eventually pick up some of those ghosts. It was a we had a hard time seeing what was happening because there's just so many Metavax blocking yeah. out the sun. <laughs> it's like what's happening underneath the Metavax? We don't know. Uh, but apparently there were good enough. Ma advantage. True. <laughs> but the Bailey connections were good enough, and as you were saying, like Oreo has the bank. Seether does not because of his low SCV count, because of his low base count. He just is gonna have a hard time rebuilding what he just lost. Yeah, oh, of Nidus right on top of the tag. There's nothing in the Nidus anyway. <laughs> oh, this is just links, okay. links are being loaded in as we speak, but the Nidus is not going to finish. We see Oreo taking his entire half of the map. His creep spread also exceeding that halfway point as well. Now going for something run by his end. The natural, the wall is a wall, but the tanks, they gaunch me. They are gaunch. Gaunch with the smudge. I, I could I could feel that you were trying to come up with like a like a rhyme or something. I, I could feel it. I could feel it. <laughs> like <laughs> Like God like Donkey Kong. But you couldn't quite do that, so it was, it was, it was good. I like I love yeah, it. You got, you, yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, Donkey Kong doesn't really Yeah, work. it doesn't, it doesn't. I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> Oh god, but here comes that transition. We saw the ghost count was reset and now is a good opportunity to go into Corruptors to switch into Broodlords to lay siege upon these bases. Until such a time though, Oreo still being very active with his Ling Bane. Seether has been able to rebuild his army once again with a bit of a super max of army. But, but is it really because of the Metavax? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's more like a super max with Metavax. Yeah. Uh, look, if he decides to go for a Doom Drop... We yeah, have, he has the medevac to do so. We have 17 medevacs, mate. We have 17. <laughs> That's healthcare. Oh my god, and Oreo wants to free up supply. <laughs> yep. Oh, he kills a lot of his own Ling Bane there, but here we go. It's worth it because Broodlords are on the way. It looks like they do get scanned here in the middle of the map. Caesar is fully aware. He immediately transitions into Thors and Vikings. Yeah, but is it too late for that, though? Thors take a long, long time to build. There aren't going to be too many Vikings out, so that's not really going to make too much of a difference here with the Brute Lords. He, Seether does have a lot of ghosts still, so he can try to utilize Snipes, but I very much doubt it. We still have a couple of Vipers here as well for Oreo, for Abducts, for that's about anything. Yeah, here we go. The Brood Lords have begun their siege, and Seether has to back off. He has to buy time for his Vikings and for his Thors. He cannot engage with this army, and as a result, he's being picked apart. Yeah, he's forced to split a little bit here, but it's the one scenario where splits don't really work to his favor. The Ling Bane buffer, though, Ooh. since it was a little bit distracted, it did allow the Ghost to get a couple of snipes in. A couple of Brute Lords do go down, but nowhere near enough of them, it seems. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be forced all the way back, and the Brute Lord count is going to get reset. So, Seether, again, holds on, but he did lose a lot of supply, and Oreo is just going to be remaxing here uh on a ground-focused army. 110 lings <laughs> were on the production tab Jeez. at one point, like, that's how much larva, that's how many resources Oreo has right now. Oh. They do get turned into banelings, and they will crash into most of this, uh, most of this army. Yeah, but yo, the hot pickup, because of all those medevacs, the entire army does evacuate, but Oreo, now knowing the position of the army, he goes for a massive counterattack. There is nothing to protect these fringe bases. Oh my god, it's not even a planetary fortress here. Uh... That's no. how desperate Seether is for a base right now. Uh, we even have a borrowed ling underneath it as well. Shaking my head, the one Viking was left behind. So Oreo can turn around and deal with that. Um, I'm sure Oreo was hoping it was a planetary, so then he would have gotten a kill on the bases here. So a little bit of a blessing in disguise for Seether. Yeah, at least he's alive. And he is starting to get a six base. I say six base, but he's still going to be on four base mining. Yeah. And I say six base, but there's still... <laughs> A burrow. Yeah. A burrow down. And you say sick base, like, but it's the natural that was lifted up and floated over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say sick base, but uh, it's a dead base. It's a dead base, mate. The workers that are rallying get caught out at the same time. A Ling right by the right hand side gonna catch a free Thor, maybe even the mineral line, maybe even a tank as well. Seether at this point just doesn't have enough supply to split up between his bases. GG gets called, and Oreo takes the series. <laughs> Two
two O's, two Terran players already, and finds himself all of a sudden in that qualifying match. Oh my god. GG, well played. Uh, <laughs> again, Aurea working through the gauntlet. He 2 O's Runamuck, he 2 O's Seether. Is anyone, can anyone stop this man? Arguably, I would say with confidence, the best Zerg player in all of Australia right now, Oreo, he is here to represent the race. But let's have a look at that bracket and see if he has an opponent. He does not quite yet. But the bracket has been, the bracket has been uh, progressing quite a bit over here. So we have Chappie to get up Vivid two to zero. He is now currently facing Piglet. And of course the winner of that series is going to face Oreo in that qualifying match. Looks like Azur did take out Stoic Willy and is now up against Probe in a pre-qualifying match. This is was initially a bit surprising to me, but it really shouldn't be because, of course, PBT, oh. unwinnable. Uh, Starduck did just beat Asher, bro, but Asher was able to take a map off of him. Wow. So, yeah, nicely done. That's actually, that's actually a pretty solid result, mate. For Azur... To, let me zoom in a little bit here. For Azure to take a map off of Starduck. I mean, sorry, first Asher. Asher, sorry, not Azure. Asher, yeah. <laughs> Look, they're both Terrans. All they're both Aussie. Players, yeah, man. All the same. same to me. <laughs> but yeah, to take a game off of Starduck, that is very impressive. I hope Asher is very happy with that result. It's going to be tanking Starduck's Illegal Lack rating a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, I uh, so far no nothing nothing too surprising outside of that. Kind of the results that we are expecting to see.